Damn, man. Could you turn up the heater in here? It's freezing. It's freezing in here? Dude, are you serious? I'm it's like, I'm actually pretty hot in this suit. I think suit Dad coat. might be an email. I think he's got a new haircut. That's why. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I do have a new haircut. It's uh, looking good, though. And it's it's coming back. Cold. It's freaking cold in there. It is literally coming back as we're as I'm watching. You should shave your head. It'll come back. I don't think I'm worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> Concerned. It may not come back. I don't have. The I did that the first time I did this. You do. The first time I did it, I was a little nervous. I'll be honest. And then it came back like it's so fast. My hair grows so fast. It's pretty good. It looks like it's coming back quickly. And I know you got. I noticed like you're compensating for the lack on top with like a beard. Yeah, I find that I could actually have a beard at work when I'm bald. So there you, you get go. away with murder if you're bald. I told you. <laughs> if you're bald, you got shit going that like Sorry. nobody else has going. Ask Dean Button. Like I've already like saved. I've I probably saved like. 15 bucks already in gel. Like, it's huge. <laughs> Dude, another thing, I did not shower this morning because you don't have to Lindsay. shower. If you're bald, you don't have well, to shower. Wait, no, no. I think what you mean is you don't have to shampoo. You don't have to shower. Dude, you could sip the whole that's, thing. That's different. You that could is sip the whole thing. That is disgusting. You don't, and like, listen, you bald have guys get away with glands murder. Over you ask your any bald guy. Body. Go up to a bald guy today and say, Did you shower? And they're like, Why would I shower? I I'm think they're going to say, Your yes. hair is not the no, only thing that's like, dirty. They'd be like, I'm bald. I don't shower when I'm bald. Like, are you curious? This is disgusting. Dude, I'll go like weeks without showering. Now. Although, you know, in like, Europe, and you won't even know. Shower, it's like once every four days in France, probably. So what's the... What's Why the, is that's showering it? contingent on the length of your hair? Right. Uh, it just like goes hand in hand. So like, women should when shower, I shower daily, but bald like, guys put it this should way. not. How about this? He's not washing <laughs> Last week sweat, I had long like... flowing mane. And then like if you don't shower <laughs> daily, they get like really greasy and all that. So you have to shower daily. Sure. You have no... no I have no mane. daily, not shower. I have no mane. I have no mane. Showering is different than shampooing. I mean, I can I get you it wash you your think. body, right? <laughs> no, I don't wash my body. Why? Like my body's not dirty. It's like Stank, you think stanky. I you think I sweat during work and stuff. Yeah. Come on. Man. What does Marissa think? Okay, uh, she's out. Of, <laughs> she's out of town. There's Doesn't another matter. reason not to shower. Yeah, she's out of town. So I don't need to shower Let's, when I'm uh, bald, when the wife's out of town, and when I don't work out. The welcome, day welcome to Left to Center, season two, <laughs> episode nine. Why do people watch the show? <laughs> I just want to point out that Foray said hello to Lindsay and crew implying that I'm the one in charge. Yeah, now. you're the locomotive. Yeah. Well, speaking I'm of what the Lynn's then here, we want to do something. Let's do our let's real quick do your spiel. Uh, we'll do our at well sponsors. Do it quick. Sponsors, and then I want to, we're going to see do some it quick, video. Like Kevin said, real quick, Chill do your out. spiel. We're do it quick. Get the hell out of Dodge. Then okay, we're going to so watch I'm some video from memory today. So we're going to watch it? some video of Tom getting his haircut. Oh, nice. Okay. That's exciting. Yeah, that's great. You're listening to Left of Center, where we cover everything from politics to important events of the day in the Midwest and the nation, all while having too much fun while doing it. And if you can't get enough of us, follow us on Left of Center on Facebook or at LockPod on Twitter. That's L-O-C-P-O-D. If you can't listen in live, you can download our episodes from the Apple Podcast or Spotify app and enjoy our audio at a crystal clear 973 kilohertz per second Ooh, um, you totally you hit a you hit a blank there. I yeah did, there was just a little for hitch. a very See? brief amount of time you know, also, i told her to stop breathing on the, the apple mic. <laughs> on the apple podcast and spotify app you can rate and subscribe to us um that will also get our ratings up and expose us to more people also if you have money our a algorithms. business or running for office or you want to wish somebody a happy birthday or something you know not saying because my birthday is coming up soon <gasps> Oh. Send account. us an email at leftofcenterpod at gmail.com and I can get your ads started for you right away. Thank you. This is season two, episode nine. Mm-hmm. When's season two end? I'm I don't know. I hope up. not like the in the 30s July, again. But... Episode 10. Episode, yeah. 10. <laughs> episode nine. This is the end of season two. We <laughs> Why push be, it to Friday, John? We'll, we'll be random like that. <laughs> season three only had four episodes. <laughs> yeah. We there decided were, season three sucked. Yeah, we had to get to season series. four quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mini-series. You can, you can binge watch us in about an hour. Speaking of series, uh, Tom, I hear you're watching Arrested Development. I'm watching Arrested Development. For the first time. First yeah. time through. First oh, time man. through. Yeah. Yeah. What a great show. You know show. What, I, I, what got me into it was I listened to Shame, uh, Smartless. Yeah, Smartless uh, the, uh, pod. podcast with Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, mm-hmm. and uh, what, I forgot the third guy's name, Sean something. He, was he wasn't in it. He was on Will and Grace. Yeah, not in Arrested Sean, Development. But they're funny, man. Well, here's that's what I would, That's a good podcast. Here's what I would Not as good as Left of Center, but pretty good. If you're about Arrested Development, what I would say is, and John and I were talking about this before the pod started, that the first seasons uh, before they took this break and then like Netflix bought them and they went back with other seasons, I forget if it was four right. seasons, are, are so much funnier yeah. than the after. I'm in the second season. You're so. gonna, it's, yeah. it's like roll off you know the, the mom. Funny. The mom reminds Bees. me of Nancy. <laughs> the mom reminds me of Nancy Pelosi a lot. Uh, yeah, sure. I see her. I go was, see totally batshit crazy. Yeah, <laughs> she's crazy. Well, I, I didn't go there. I did. Keep in mind, 
Christine Pelosi is my friend, John. Yes. Yeah, like, let's throw John For out. legal reasons, what that if, was a joke. What if Christine Pelosi is listening right now and John just... She could be. On hey, Christine, I, is, your co-chair. I, like, I meant batshit crazy in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our sponsors. Our sponsors Misprint great. Printing with both Monster are the best. and Hammond Locations. Rick Baltzenberger and his team are there for absolutely all of your printing needs, including whatever you need for Valentine's Day, like a big card or a poster of your oh, yeah. lover. He's responsible. Oh, what? Fast. <laughs> you and get good. the lover presents at this print. You get the <laughs> the wife presents. At the closer we get to Valentine's Banners Day, the creepier this gets. Of yeah. all sizes, from wrapping for cards your lover. to business cards. No job. If I get big, a big card from you, I'm gonna be small. freaked out now. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> gets me a big card this year. <laughs> Call Rick I'm like, and what Teresa. the hell is going on? At two one nine eight three six two five one seven. Hi, I Rick and Teresa and Miss Print. We appreciate you. They listen every show. They're the best. We appreciate them. And They're pretty cool. If I got a big card from Kevin, I would appreciate it. Even though we're dissing on it right now, I would appreciate it. Get a giant card. I need to get you a Valentine's Day present. Aww. No, I mean, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't discourage anybody getting me presents. <laughs> Kevin and I get presents for some shower, get, some shower gel if for you Christmas. Get like a really big card and we could just put it on the desk behind you guys, like <laughs> oh, pinned God. to the wall. A big picture of dad's head. That right. would be great. Kevin should do that in his office. I think it's a great idea. Just a too. reminder. It would be wallpaper. Latitude Commercial is a full-service commercial real estate, brokerage, and property management firm specializing in northern Indiana and the Chicago suburbs. Local tenants to national developers have benefited from Latitude's experience in the commercial real estate market. When you select Latitude Commercial, you get Chicagoland expertise with worldwide marketing and networking ability. They can sure network. I can tell you that. Whether or not... I had nothing there. Wow. Did you guys... Did my Mm -mm. microphone go out? (laughs) I'm just kidding. Whether you're you're a developer looking to sell... A tenant looking to expand, an investor looking to purchase, or an owner in need of property management services, Latitude can help. Contact Latitude at 219-864-0200 or at latitudeco.com so they can get to work for you. Good work. And our last one before our break and back to our video, Metropolitan Steel. Metropolitan Steel is a proud union contractor and AISC Advanced Certified Erector with over 60 years of combined experience <laughs> serving the Chicagoland area. All of Metropolitan Steel's work is performed to exact project specifications, engineered procedures, and code requirements. For more information, ask for Red Stone at 708-474-2072. Metropolitan Steel, thank you for your sponsorship. When I ever need an erector, I call Red. That's a good idea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or find him, Red at, is my main find him at the wheel. He's my main erector. Eating his Belgian waffle. Oh. Yeah. All right, John, what do we got? Can we show some... Uh, a video By of the way, haircut. I got to meet Ooh. the Al- Alamo family is how they pronounce it. Alamo, okay. It's spelled like A-L-A-I-M-O. A- yeah, like Lamo, a- Lamo, a- Lamo, a- Lamo, a- Lamo. But they pronounce it Alamo. Okay. Uh, and Ariana shaved my head last week. But more importantly, uh, thanks to the Lockpot audience, thanks to a lot of people that helped raise a lot of money, um, $20,000 we raised for Ariana's family, which wow. is amazing. We started off at 10000 And Kevin and I, when we first started talking about this, we were going to start at 5000 Right. Yep. Yeah. And then I was like, listen, even if I have to personally guarantee it, I'll get it up to 10. And I was like thinking I'm going to have to work my butt off to get 10. We hit 10 like within a day. I love and then that. we upped it to 20 and then we it got a lot harder to get up to 20. And we eventually got there right as the cut was taking place. Which there you is, go. 19, 5, 29. A hundred percent. No, but no, the, I know. There were that's checks what we did on Go. Right. That's Agreed. what was on GoFundMe. Mm-hmm. I gave him a check for $4,000 well, $3,000. And I've got a check for 500 sitting downstairs. Right. So like we, they did, we did almost 25 when you really that's think awesome. about it. Wow. So like that's a, a lot of, we raised a lot of it from left of center. And I appreciate the audience for, for being, you know, so generous. Terrible. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, first off, this family needs it. And I want you to know 100% of the money went straight to the family. And I asked the father when I gave it to him, he's a great guy, uh, a Chicago police officer. I asked him to use it for them. Like, don't send it for your medical yeah. bills. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, use please it use by. it for you guys. Like, you know, put Enjoy it someplace it. so you, your family, you know, like you guys would pay for hotel expenses and a lot of miscellaneous expenses, medical and or stuff like that. even just like treat yourself a little bit. Yeah. You know, right. I hope I'm, they. I hope they enjoy it. I hope it'll last them for a few months at least. I got a question for you. Does GoFundMe? Do they take anything? Yeah, they do. I, they, they do. Take a piece. I didn't know. They that. take a piece. Plus, like I tipped them when I when I donated. Sure. They ask you to tip them, and I did. Uh-huh. They asked you to do a percentage. And I, I was just doing. 
I just didn't know if they like actually took something. I off think the they top. do. I'm not involved in the GoFundMe side. It's being run through uh, Sharon and Eva and Eileen. Nice. Um, but yeah, they do take a piece of it. Yeah, I was just curious. But that's a, it's a, it. What a great way to raise money. It gave us the ability to raise a lot of money Absolutely. easily. Like how we would have to do it with checks and it's stuff crazy. like that. And we would have raised a fraction of. What oh, we I did. think it's well worth it. I was it just is. curious. It is. It just gives you a centralized place to raise money. Which and, and by the way, people know GoFundMe. They trust it. I think for the most part, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you can put your credit card. Yeah, on I wasn't involved in the financial end at all. I, I never put myself on the financial end. John, I'm do always, we have any video? I'm always raising money. I'm, I'm not touching the money. I know, and that's Smart. my own role. Yeah. Like my father, honestly, when I first was elected, that was the first piece of advice he gave me. And it was the best piece of advice I got because, because I did that early on in 2004. You're used to it. I'm used to it. But not only that, like I've seen a lot of people over the years that got themselves in trouble by touching money. So, oh, that's me with the Mohawk. Look at that. Yeah, this is, for those that missed the video, this is... Um, one of the best moments. This is when she takes the blade just right down the top. Of oh, your let's head. see it. This is great. Um, For those of you watching on podcast or listening on podcast, we apologize. We down. love you. But, but one of the cool things about Facebook Live right, and YouTube. Right, great job. Yeah. Oh, the big one. Oh. <laughs> Straight down the middle. Wow. <laughs> Here it comes. We all care about you very much, all right? You know that. Right? We do. Everybody does. So many people helped you out because they care about you and your family. So I just wanted you to know that, honey. Yeah, uh, very cool. Awesome. She's a sweetheart. Yeah, congratulations. It was really. I nice look cool with the that. Mohawk, didn't I? It was interesting. I I could run like that. No, you can't. Yeah, I'm no. saying no. I'd be like the intimidating. You mayor. don't. You're not cool enough. People say I'm an intimidating mayor anyway. If I had a mohawk, just look like you're about to storm the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look like a Trump supporter. <laughs> uh, and I think, it, by the way, the orange looks good on you in that photo. I know. With the look, uh, the one like, that you guys ridiculed me for. Yes. Little did we know you were just supporting leukemia. That's right, man. I was deep. I was going <laughs> deep. I was I'm deep sure undercover. That, talk about lucky. I pulled you guys talk in. Talk about lucky. I pulled you. Yeah, you think it was cool. He goes from like, you look like a pumpkin to I'm supporting leukemia. Well, yeah, you notice how <laughs> you notice how quickly John pulled the pumpkin down. He, who looked like the asshole, me or John? I, I'd say it was John. Like I vote one nothing. John looked like an asshole that day. I actually made it the thumb, the YouTube thumbnail. Oh, that's <laughs> great. That's great. <laughs> Check out our YouTube channel, by the way. Subscribe. I, yeah. I always watch the YouTube channel. Nice. Hey, um, you know, um, we talked about the fact that we were supposed to have Mayor Snedekor on today. Yeah, you we did. You want to mention why? What Mayor Snedekor had an emergency procedure he had to undergo. Uh, so we only I, wish I don't want to well. get into details, um, but... I think they're adding muscles to him, something like that. No, <laughs> yeah, he's no. gonna he's gonna be a bodybuilder when he gets done. No, um, Mayor Snedecor had a, an emergency come up over the weekend. He was supposed to be our guest today, and obviously he's recuperating. He is home resting. Yeah, so we love you, Mayor Brian, and we're looking forward to getting you rescheduled. And we'll obviously let the audience know when that date takes place. But Mayor Mayor Snedecor, in the meantime, you have a lot of friends in Hammond, starting at the top with the mayor. I love Mayor Brian and. Uh, Get better, get well soon, and then yeah. get over to lockdown. Yeah, we want to get him on. Right. Hey, uh, I saw a story that was right up our alley. It was about COVID testing. <laughs> okay. No. Right? right up our alley. Right up your alley. Probably. Right up. <laughs> it's right up your alley <laughs> when you really think about this. Oh. No. Yeah. That's this a, is a Chinese. I have the feeling I'm about new, to get traumatized again. Yeah. This is right up Kevin's alley. You know. No, you said you're a alley. new way to test for COVID in China, and this is a real thing. <laughs> John, could you put the video up? The, uh, Don't the, well, the headlines up right now. We'll, the we'll Chinese a- anal swab. This is a very accurate way to test for COVID. This if, is not a joke. If you're listening, you should be thankful that you're right. not watching. Yeah, for the ones. <laughs> this is one of those where, you know, Tom's like, sorry, everyone. You can't see my mohawk get cut, which was true. That was cool. <laughs> right. This guys, is one you don't want to watch. Pro- yeah, Shoving you're like thanking your Lord. You're on Apple Podcasts <laughs> yeah, right now. Thank God I'm just listening. Because right it. now what you will see is a Chinese. Uh, what is what are those things? Scientist. Mannequin. It's a mannequin. And it's dressed in pajamas, and it's like, and it's like, (laughs) down like on fours, basically bending forward, like he's about to get searched for weapons, like a prostate exam. And then had one of those. He's wearing like pajamas. Is it on, John? Those are no fun. I'm about to run this. (laughs) (laughs) This is terrible. This is not (laughs) good. (laughs) All right, (laughs) we're gonna. It's all atomic. So you're gonna see like this Chinese mannequin. For those of you that are. There's a Chinese mannequin and there's a Chinese doctor there. The mannequin is wearing pajamas. Okay. And you can't understand the doctor because he's speaking Chinese. Well, if you speak Mandarin, you know what he's talking about. Thank you. Yeah. He is learned, though. I can tell you. You can tell. He's learned. learned. He's learned. He is learned. I have pronounced it learned. Okay, so the, the mannequin's bent, bent forward. And now up. Oh, the he pants come like down. He has like, why is he wearing pajamas? First off, do you ever go to the doctor? <laughs> Casual. <laughs> Casual. 
And then he doesn't the, know what's going to happen. Look at that. There's like a, a butt complex here. Is this safe for work? <laughs> Lindsay, what's the medical term for that? The position? No. The, all the junk no, down No, don't there. say anything, Lindsay. <laughs> well, here comes the thermometer. Oh, this is disgusting. And see, why, Dad, wait, but see, why Dad, are they saying this works? You, you know what the most, the most dangerous thing about being a doctor in this case? You do not want to smell the thermometer when you get it out. You uh, put it right into the test tube. Thank you for that disgusting. Right? If you're a, a frat boy, I swear to God. He Can, put it in. He pulls it out. And there's an accurate way to test for COVID. <laughs> but what's wrong with the nasal swab? And the, and the, like, I would rather do the nasal swab all day long. In, than the, medical the, profession, in the medical profession, the anal entryway is the last possible resort really? for any kind of... Mine is, named, the Chinese are there, mine is named the anal exit point. There well, is no I'm entryway sign probably, there at all. You would do it this way if you... They were concerned about contamination of some sort. Or There's a lot of contamination some, in, in, in a lot of situations, I imagine. Issue. Can we, uh, Especially if quick, you haven't showered for a day. Get to some official information, which is <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that Indiana uh, yesterday um, knocked down the age requirement for your vaccine to 65. Yeah, I saw that. So that's a big deal. Um, so By for the those way, folks that are 65 and over. I think we're doing really well in Indiana. I agree with you. I talked to people from California, like people in the medical fields. Like I have I talked to somebody from Florida last my week. family and they're like they have no clue. Even people in the medical fields are like nobody's getting shots. We don't know what the hell's going on. So talking about Indiana and I agree with you mayor. I think the state's doing really well with getting getting this out, but people may not know this. Go to our shot o u r our shot.in.gov and you click the county you're in, you put in your zip code I think and then everything comes up. I checked yesterday there are vaccine appointments in Lake County for mid-February, and or like early to mid-February still. So please go on there, ourshot.in.gov. It's a very easy website. Check it out and uh, make sure that those that are 65 and over, first responders, first responders or those in the medical field, go get your shot. I know a number of seniors that have already gotten shot, uh, received their shots in Indiana, yeah. and you know, including my father, who I was super proud and of. And my dad, yeah. He's had both of them. Did your dad get both uh, of them? He's up on the fourth for his next one or the third or something. So I call my mom and Kelly, and I'm like, hey, you get the shot yet? You or Mike, her husband? And she's like, no. We don't even know like what well, you have to do or nothing. California is a big state. Like They've got a lot of people to get through. Yeah, yeah but they also have should have more vaccine. So it's all about getting out the vaccine to but wherever. But it's also getting out the getting the word out like online and Facebook uh-huh. and all that and Sue's got, a, Sue's got a computer get... yeah like I, you know she uses I know she does Facebook and stuff I don't know if she has she like, might be the last time I was visiting her at her house I used her computer and I went on to the browser and there were like 50 bars at the top of the screen really? because of viruses, <laughs> like viruses? downloaded <laughs> I love my grandmother and she uses She's her listening. phone probably I'm... hi grandma I know you're really good at using the phone but your computer last time I checked was in pretty rough shape so you're saying that if she had, I had to fewer viruses everything. fewer viruses on her computer she could log on and get her shot quickly so these viruses are causing her not to get well COVID. it's not like they're putting all this info on Facebook the they're putting it on like government websites who's going to government websites so mom everybody. if you're listening mom your computer is virus filled, according to Lindsay. <laughs> oh, don't make this about me. Are they? They weren't like pornographic or anything, like that. I saw. Really? Thank God. That would be weird if my mom had <laughs> yeah. like I don't think boobs we, and stuff. See, that's on a her. question like, like, you don't want to ask. Yeah, like you don't want to ask your, that question because you, you don't know, know the answer. Grandma, I have a funny I'm so story about sorry this. I brought this up. I have a funny story about this. Here so, we go. Uh-huh. So Tommy Here we comes go. up. This is Tommy's not listening, so Down we can talk about him, right? So Tommy's like, he comes up. He's like, Dad. There's something wrong with my computer downstairs. And I'm, I don't know anything, right? So I'm like, okay. So I go downstairs and I go down and there's like pornographic like windows like all over the place, right? That's not true. Boobs. And, You're embellishing. And penises You're and like embellishing. all over the, the computer screen. And I'm like, what the hell? And he's like, I, I have no idea how this guy here. And I'm like, well, let me tell you something, Tommy. I have a computer also. And I don't have boobs and penises all over my computer. I wonder how this happened, right? And he was like, I have, like, I have no idea, Dad, Poor how this Tommy. happened. I mean, you know, right. this is private he's information. Like, he's like visiting these sites and he gets viruses and oh, then he no. comes to me for that help. That does not necessarily mean that he's getting them from pornographic websites. There are John, a ton of viruses get, online John, that have, you, have, have your computers kind of have boobs and penises all over it? No. I don't because either. we know how to not download random things But how does Tommy's end up like that? Tommy's ended up like that because he went to the wrong site. you don't know anything site. about computers. You think this that you go true. to a porn website and then it. automatically you've got viruses. It's not like STDs. <laughs> you know what I think? <laughs> it is. I think it is a lot like STDs. And no, you can tell not. I don't you go to porn websites. You have to download websites. things actively you know, poor from Tommy. websites. Like you know, music. He's getting like a, accused without yeah. being able to Tommy's defend girlfriend, himself. His girlfriend's listening right now. She's like, what the hell is going on? See what you do to poor Tommy? But anyway, this goes back to my mom. Why she doesn't have her shot? Right. 
I mean, I think it's state to state. I mean, I'm glad that the federal government's stepping in and saying we're going to do federal sites because elite. That, I think that's going to help. So basically, leave it to the states. We're you saying Indiana's, on, Indiana's doing better. I think California. Indiana's doing good. Right? I think they they've had a year to get their website together, and I think they've got a good system finally working. Because every time I go to an Indiana website previous to COVID, I was like, this website makes no sense. I agree with you, Lance. All these buttons don't work or take me where they, they don't have the information where it needs to be. But their COVID one shot website, is, and I don't, it's real good. Yes, and I don't want to pick on just California. I was talking to somebody in Florida, and she said the same thing. It's a disaster. Really? She's in her late seventies, doesn't know where to go. Let me tell you something. Sign it up. In California, though, they have the recall going with Governor Newsom right mm-hmm. now. So my mom asked me about that also. And I stuck up for, gov- for Governor Newsom, who I like, by the way. I met. I like him. He was elected mayor of San Francisco the same year I was elected mayor of Hammond. And we were both, like, young. We both slicked our hair back. Like, we looked a lot like each other. <laughs> he copied I me. met him. And I, thinner, over the years, thinner, I, but... I followed his whole career over the years because I met him. And obviously, the mayor of San Francisco is much higher up on the food chain than I was. But I followed him through his whole career. And when he became lieutenant governor and then he became governor and now he's got the pandemic and they're, they're trying to run him out of Dodge. They have recall mechanisms in California. And I, I, yeah, I can tell you when I was in LA, um, when was that over the, I guess over the holiday, Christmas, right? yeah, Christmas, New Year's, there is a lot of, um, anger towards him. Yeah. Yeah. I, even in, even in LA, even in the areas around I'll be honest, uh, man, LA. I, I don't think it's well, I think it's unwarranted. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough, tough gig. What are you supposed to do, man? Seriously. You're, you're a governor in a pandemic and like, People are pissed at the governor because he's saying, I want to, I want you to stay home so we don't have hundreds of thousands of people Think about dying. Indiana. Republicans were pissed at, at yeah. Holcomb because, for talking about a mask. Right, mandate. for a mask. How ludicrous. Right. I mean, they, they, the Libertarian got like 18% of the vote or whatever right. it was in the governor's race because... Right. Because of, Governor Holcomb's not Republican enough. Right. Right. He's it's, moderate. He's so it's not just, I guess my point is it's not just a Democratic versus Republican. I mean, it can be even partisan within the Republican Party. Right. So it's, it's just crazy. a lack of logic. Like the way to avoid an illness is to avoid the illness, and the illness is in your nose. anti vaxxers Why is why are they opening stuff back up now? If the number one cause of money. death in January was COVID, why are they suddenly opening things back up? Why who's the economy? They? Who's they? 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 Yes, you're California, you're Michigan. I, I'll be honest with you. I think part of the reason is they're getting death threats, and like people are like going to kill them. They're finally giving in. They're gonna, yeah. They're giving in. It's like they're giving into the craziness. They're, they're giving in, uh, you know, Keep, twenty days after Biden was an, elected. Anti vaxxers All of a sudden, they're giving in. You well, think uh, honestly? You think states, if California started opening it up, that Trump would have won the presidency, John? Seriously, he would have, they would have won California. Republicans would have won California. Guys, you guys, it must have been stolen. Uh, you cannot convince me that there is. This is a coincidence. Well, because you tend to like you're a co- conspiracy theorist. So, <laughs> if you, conspiracy theorist. If, so Kevin, everything, everything's think, a conspiracy. Kevin, just think. Everything can't be a coincidence. Think pragmatically. Everything's opening back up now that Biden's elected. Hey, dude, Lindsay, I, I think Lindsay, you got popcorn. I'd love, I'd love the some popcorn CDC. Right now. I can go make some. I th- I think some of the lockdown stuff was to try and hurt Trump. And you you yeah. can He's criticize not, me all I, you I, want. I I'm sure, I would you. agree with that. Oh, I do not. I agree. I do not. Because do here, not. John, I'll, I'll give an example. Attention. I'll give you an example. Indiana, Holcomb opened up before the election. And then he why called, did he open he, up? Pick, oh, okay, right. Yeah. Why did so he I'm open up? It goes, it goes both ways. Why did Holcomb open up? I agree. Because he felt pressure from, from the Trump. Republicans. Yeah, I agree. From it goes both ways. And he had right. an election coming. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Yeah. I, would, I, would I don't disagree with that, with that Kevin. Hey, John. I don't disagree with that. John. What is that? Was that? Trump. Trump got spanked, dude. Just move on. Seriously. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. The election was not stolen. Be nice to John. Why do I come on this show? We Twice need you. Don't be that guy. We, we need you. We don't have a show <laughs> without John. Criticized. Don't be mean to him. <laughs> this is the season finale. We, We're not John criticizing just you. Season yeah, two is, is over. He finale. just put in his two week notice. <laughs> season two is over. <laughs> yeah. So random. We had 36 episodes in season All of a one. Just goes season black. two. Black. Yeah, right. How many episodes do we have? Season one. Way too many. 36. 36. 38. 36. 37. 38. I think. Yeah. That's a lot. And we had we have nine right now. Right. So we're we're coming up on our fiftieth total Ooh, episode. We need awesome. to celebrate that. You know what? Somehow. You're right. It's like what? Super Bowl yeah. L. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we need to remember that. Hey yeah. guys, after the break, uh, we're gonna go do some commercials, and then when we come back, we're gonna talk some caucus, 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 and then oh, we're talk good. some caucus you versus an election. Now? What is it? Yeah, let's do our let's do let's do a break. And caucus, 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 caucus. Thank you, John Bowditch. John Bowditch agrees caucus, with caucus. me. Thank you. I love caucus. Of course he does. Caucus, caucus, caucus. Should that be the title? No, you should yeah, definitely should be the title. pull up that clip from caucus, the Simpsons. Caucus, 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 caucus. Look at you. I love that. I love caucuses. You know how to do the. I love. Ca- is it caucuses or cockeye? Good question. Caucuses. <laughs> I think it's cockeye. I don't think it's cockeye. It's not like fungus. Yeah, cockeye is 
is a, a bacteria that guy. exists. Thank you. Tortillas Nuevo Leon, family owned by the Martinez family since 1975. Tortillas Nuevo Leon is a staple in the Mexican food industry for decades. Try their flour tortillas or crispy nacho chips for the big game this weekend or just for a weekday meal. Whether you just Wherever you shop, just look for their popular red and white label. Look for their popular red and white label. What the hell is this, Kevin? Sorry, bad time. What the hell okay, is this? Then? It was I'm early. A professional, damn it! <laughs> I did it before. Sorry, Tatiana Nuevo Leon. I read it like it is. Yes. Where wherever you shop or look for their popular red and white label, look for their popular red and white <laughs> label and visit their website at tortillasnuevoleon.com. That is tortillasnuevoleon.com for more info. Thank you to the Martinez family for being our Patient. friends and awesome business in Hammond and producing a great sheriff who I think is amazing. I, I love Oscar. And I love tortillas Nuevo Leon. I love their chips. <laughs> Apologize for the type I love of Oscar yeah. and tortillas. Sorry the about, <laughs> sorry about my, my unprofessional. Sorry, sorry for the first copy air in like 30 episodes. That, and I will not let you <laughs> yeah, forget I, I it. Can see that. That, make it the last one. <laughs> now I'm you know my life's like. <laughs> you, you lose one me. election. Yeah, that's it's it. Just yeah, all yeah, I suck. He's on freaking thin ice. True Barbecue. You don't have to go to Chicago to find good food and a fine dining oh. experience. True Barbecue in Munster has all that and more. Stop by and look, take a look at our menu of, full of barbecue favorites with some new twists on old classics. Choose a drink from our extensive list of whiskey, like my go-to, a Woodford Double Oak on the rocks, or stick with one of your favorites, like Mayor Tom's Vodka with a muddled lime. Muddled. Located at 8940 <laughs> Calumet Avenue in Munster. Come visit and enjoy true barbecue. Lindsay enjoyed the Cobb salad yesterday. It Do was you... not the Cobb salad. Oh, I'm it sorry. Was salmon salad. Pardon me, Lindsay. I like, I don't like Cobb salads. They're boring. How was the sea... How was the salmon salad? It was delicious. All right, there you go. Cobb nice. salads are boring? We're There's back. so much stuff in them. What do you We're mean? back. so Let's much talk... stuff in the salmon salad. Caucus, caucus, caucus. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, we had a caucus. And like, I realize there's people out there that don't care about the North Township trustee position. And we just want you to know, like, this is important no matter where you live or what you're listening to, because what happens when a politician doesn't finish their term? Or dies or vacates. Like dies or, or vacates. Gets convicted. Gets thrown in jail. <laughs> like, things like that that happen. Or in this case. These things, things happen. happen. Okay. Resign. In, in this County. case, yeah, the congressman, oh, excuse me, the trustee was elected to Congress and he resigned his office. So or vacated it. Right? He vacated it. And that leaves it to what in Indiana we call precinct committee people to fill. So in this case, we had, what, 150? Yeah, so let's th let, maybe talk about, uh, Mayor, I was going to say, you know, the difference between a caucus and an election, right? You think, oh, my God, someone's up for election. We have to vote for him. Right. In, so once a party occupies that seat, it becomes the party seat. Right. So like in this case. So democratic. It was a democratic held. seat. Right. So when, there's a vac when it gets vacated before the next election for that office, the party, the, the rules, actually the state rules, it's not just party rules. The state statute says the party that occupied that seat gets to hold a caucus right. where not voters get to vote, precinct committeemen get to it's vote. It's like election day, right? Like the same rules on election day, do they apply? Or? Uh, no. Right. They do so not. like party in, a caucus, in a caucus, you could like wear buttons. Yeah. Right. In the, in, yeah, it's a room full of people that you right. can wear buttons. You can go it, talk to people. It's all political people too. These are like That's what's fun about it's it. It's all right. just a bunch of politicians it going is. around and It's literally talking. 150, 160 politicians. Comparing the people who are running for the position right. and making deals and having decisions. And yeah, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do because it's pure politics. It's, it's just like, that's what it's like walking around and having conversations with smoke filled people. rooms, basically. Right. And this is, and it was at the civic center, which by the way, is one of my favorite places to have a caucus because you great. can have the public upstairs. Yeah. The public could watch from upstairs, which is really cool. Right. Chairman Weezer put on, I think a great caucus. We had it socially distant. We had different rooms with, and John, great job helping getting the, the video up in different rooms around the Civic Center. So right. it was like socially distant. We had people, you know, in different rooms and stuff. So it was cool. So anyway, the in this case, our candidate won. And I'm, the team I'm on, like our team is real happy. Sure. And Hammond, Hammond came through big time. Uh, we, we supported a gentleman from East Chicago named Adrian Santos. Uh, I had multiple friends running. Which, which was, was tough. Uh, yeah, um, good friends of mine. Uh, the chairwoman from Highland, Marsha Novak. She's who, been great. Whose husband works for my wife. And who's on the North Township Advisory Board. And she ran, and she was a, a huge supporter of mine when I ran for Congress. And she's a great Richard, lady. Great and people. Her family's wonderful. Brian. I've been friends with them for decades. And so she's running, so I'm like, oh, my God, Marsha's running. And then Anna, Anna Mamala from Hammond, who was on the school board for over a decade. And whose dad was North Township trustee for years when I was younger. And mm -hmm. every time... Tom McDermott was on the ballot. She's been a, a total supporter. Yeah. And then when Marissa runs for judge, Anna was a total supporter. So I have, I have two humongous friends running, and I also have Adrian Santos. 
a gentleman I've known for a long time who's been a good friend and a supporter of the year. So, and then there was one other candidate. We don't need to get into details, but there was a few other candidates, but one of them in particular is being backed by the gentleman that beat me for Congress, by Congressman Mervan, uh, Lisa. Uh, and basically, it was over three rounds, right? Three rounds, right, Kev? Uh, it was three rounds because Marsha right. dropped out in the third round voluntarily, right. which you can do. Right. Yeah. You know? It was it was great. It was a great win. Yeah, it really is. And I think the point that, um, well, a couple things. One, um, these these caucuses, right? It's not like your the ballots go out. They're paper ballots. You put them in a ballot box. They get dumped out on a table, and we count them. And we count them with people there present. And it's they're double counted. And so it's not like this, like, oh, let's go to the back and back do room. the ballots. Yeah, yeah we better. it's all out in the open. It's all in the open. Everybody has a watcher there to watch and make sure the ballots are counted. In fact, there was one time where... I I, um, I was literally doing tally marks to count, you know, to do the votes, and I made a mistake once, but it got caught uh, by Michelle Feynman, the head of the election division down at Crown Point, because she was doing the paper counting. So right. that's it, there's double checks and everything. So right. it was really cool. I think it, it's a great process. Um, it was well run, and congrats to the North Township New Tr- North Township trustee. Um, after it was the first round, obviously, I want you know everybody wanted to see where everybody fell because. Everybody lies in a caucus. That's another thing. Wait, there, are, there are more. There are multiple rounds to. It depends how, how many people. If run. there's just two people running, there would be one round. But in this case, there was like you six, have to get fifty people. plus one. So right. you don't just get a plurality. You just keep going until somebody gets a majority, right? And then so, like the lowest. Yeah, gets drops off. Out. Right, exactly. Okay. And so the first round, we wanted to see where everybody fell, <clears throat> and if you could tell right away. The two main candidates were... It was 35-34. Uh, right. Adrian Santos was wow. barely beating Lisa Matanovich. Yeah, by one vote. And then there was the next pack of people was Marsha and Anna. Were, mm-hmm. were, they were distant, though. But they were tied together, but distant from the top two. And then everybody else fell off below that. So we cut off everybody else per prior agreement. Right. If you're 10% or less, you drop. You drop. So the second round, there's four candidates running. And then the second round, Adrian picks up some more votes. So he starts stretching mm-hmm. his lead And on. so did Lisa. And Lisa, but he was start, starting to stretch it, but they still weren't where they needed to be. Mm-hmm. And in this case, Anna dropped off because she was eliminated. Marsha agreed to drop off and urged her candidates to vote. I, I don't know if she urged them to vote either, but she dropped out. And basically, everybody starts going after Anna and Marsha's votes. And I was, and that's the cool thing about the caucus. I was like, like outspoken, sure. like talking loud, like, we need to push Adrian over the top. I'm like, and, I think, and the funny thing <laughs> is, I heard so much whining this morning on the, the other station when I was oh. listening. They were like, Wah, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> That is obnoxious Mayor whining. Tom. That title is correct. That sounds like a man being murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor oh. Tom was talking out loud. Hit it again, John. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, he was talking out loud. I think it's crazy that uh, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, Mayor Tom won. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Well, look, you didn't win. Your guy won. <laughs> that is so bad. Our guy so, won. Like, it was. It was vulgar. It's so. I was listening this morning. I was laughing. I, I'm God, driving I Patrick to school, listening to that. and I'm listening to this trash, and I'm laughing at these people. Like they're like, it was against the law what he was doing. He was talking out loud. What are you doing? Oh geez, I was not ready for I that. I guess no <laughs> one's been in, to a caucus before. Yeah, you, I, you know what it reminds me. You know, like I'm thinking of one of the, my one of the favorite caucus. Sorry, John. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> one of my favorite caucuses that you did when you were um, chairman was uh, the East Chicago Mayor Caucus. Yeah. That was so fun. It was like no holds barred. There were all these candidates. That's everybody thing, was Kevin. Everybody was like horse trading and talking and how are we going to do it? And Mayor, so Copeland, like, and Mayor Copeland came out on top. It was amazing. People don't understand that like before uh, COVID, when caucuses would be in one room, everybody's just standing together. Yeah. Making deals, right? Yeah. So we show up to this caucus and everybody's like socially distanced and nobody's talking. So I'm like, hey, everybody, we're voting for Adrian. Let's go. And everybody's like, whoa, like what's going on here, right? I'm like- Dumbass is like everybody should have been pushing their candidate. Think like about that the sheriff's like, caucus. That's right. That was another fun one. It's like, that was oh, the auditorium. We're not supposed to talk bullshit. You could talk all you want. There's no rules in a freaking party caucus. It's that's like, right. it's like gets your candidate elected. That's a rule. So, you know, a, a lot of whining. Oh, Mayor Tom oh, was talking my, out that's loud. That's my ears. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like a very concentrated version of a, a long term election where you, you know when you're in an election, of course you can't stand outside the poll and be like, vote for this person. But 
you were still going around the area, talking to neighbors, knocking on doors, handing out literature. You can still do that at a caucus. It's it's well, all. I mean, it's one thing to, to say like. Area. It would be one thing if you were like standing over somebody. Hey, um, yeah, on right. that piece of paper, you know who you better mark that's down. Right. I mean, that's come right. on. That's right. It's I mean, ridiculous. once the once the voting started, everybody but, voted and they turned in their ballot. The point is, it's what you guys are doing is not illegal. <laughs> so it's not. These well, people just don't mayor was doing. Law. I was just trying I'm to help. Kevin was being the party lawyer. I was the one that was campaigning. Yeah, I, I was mean, doing it. Mike Tolbert. Why, in, Which in is your, wide, you're allowed to do that. Absolutely allowed to. So some people just don't. Know and there's the a gallery, right? Can't yeah, people be? Dude, the press was up there writing stories. So like if I'm breaking the, the law, wouldn't they do a story on it? <laughs> right. Isn't this the ultimate transparency then? Yeah, absolutely. Every, you can see everything going. You on. You could literally look over where we were tallying votes if you yeah. wanted to. I, there was a reporter up there was taking there? pictures, shooting down. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, there was could, no. Yeah, and this is, by the way, this is coming from a guy who believes there was some election and, fraud, <laughs> the last election. But in the in 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 this one, I mean, it was totally. And it was your first caucus, right, John? It was my first caucus. Yeah. yeah. And you thought it, it was it was like this is how all elections should be. Honestly, <laughs> everyone should be able to watch. I love all this hand, stuff happening. Hand tallying, that's no fun. By I the love way. a caucus. <laughs> caucus, caucus, caucus. It's, it's, I mean, I thought it was done well. I had, uh, by the I, way, I you know, thanks to Mike Tolbert, Jim Weezer, Michelle Feynman, all yep. the election staff. Yep. They did such a great job. And Civic you know, Center. Yeah, right. Civic Center, Anisha. Yep. So it was cool. It was fascinating to see. Being that I the love, first I one. I love caucuses. Everybody walking around. You know what, what yes. makes it even better? When your person wins. That helps. You walk out with a big smile. Better than losing. Face. I've walked out of those things pissed and off before. And you sound like this when you lose. Like, oh, God. That's starting to hurt my ears. <laughs> 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 Lindsay, you look a little tired today. I am Whoa. exhausted. I know. Oh, uh, that did the, not come the baggy, from me. The baggy eyes, you know. Oh, wow. Thank you. I don't think nursing school is being uh, I think Lindsay looks great. I had my first pathophys test today what over uh, acid-based balance imbalances, fluid imbalances, uh, <laughs> oh, <sorry>. cell adaptation. <laughs> totally fell asleep. My bad. Cell injury and death. When's yeah. the last time you had a cell injury and death test? Uh, yeah. <laughs> last night. <laughs> no shower. A lot of injury. A lot of cell injury last night. I'm very tired. I'm, I'm glad. exhausted. You know, I think, honestly, like being a nurse is uh, uh, very similar to going to law school, like what you're doing right now. It reminds me a lot of what it's Chase cheaper. is doing. And it's it's a definitely bachelor's cheaper. Degree. No doubt. It's definitely cheaper. <laughs> Come out with a lot I'm less s- debt, Lynn. S- well, this is my second time through college, so I'm kind of, it's like going to law school. You know what else is good about being a, a, a nurse versus a lawyer? Pe- everything people like you more <laughs> that's yeah. for sure people yeah. like you nobody will like make jokes about you getting hit by a car like no with yeah, us, they right? give you respect during a pandemic mostly without a doubt you're like a uh, front lines i know everyone's like wow you they never say that about lawyers to go to nursing right i know <laughs> like what are the lawyers doing during a pandemic i know right they didn't <laughs> nothing say nothing like, good we gotta get our lawyers home. these shots <laughs> we don't want to lose our lawyers um, they're like first responders like i'm a freaking mayor i still haven't gotten a shot indiana, nobody's even called me first indiana shot. gave lawyers like a leg up on vaccines, when I but heard not that, teachers. Way, like, I, when I heard try that, a I was lawyer like, in the house. Ridiculous. Yeah, let's vaccinate our lawyers because they're working from home, but our teachers that we want to yeah. send back to I school. I think teachers should get first. Teachers should be up first there responders. with first responders. Yeah, that, right. And old people. Yeah. Like, no offense if you're an old person. I'm seniors, I meant. Yeah, I think that's I didn't right. mean old people. I, don't think I didn't mean old people. The line. Old people is totally not. not and there's no like nurse correct. jokes. You hear about lawyer jokes, but no nurse. And jokes. And you know what? Another thing is, is if I want to go practice in another state, I don't have to take the bar again. Where are you moving? No. <laughs> like, don't be and you can make a lot out. of money. See, when I retire, I don't think I'm going to hang out in that Indiana is, that for is my true. entire life. Like, we can move to other states as lawyers. You have to take the bar. That's true. I yeah. mean, in some, sta- some states. Unless like, you go to, like, South Dakota. Or Alaska. Take the they're, like, they're like, you'd be, like, the whole lawyer in the whole state. Come on in. Come on in, South Dakota. <laughs> Goddamn, we haven't had a lawyer in a long time. <laughs> hang your shingle. We Alaska the, will pay you to shingle. move up there. <laughs> Yeah, you want to go to some state where you actually want to go. They, they want you. The we want lawyers. I'm gonna, I want to move to Florida. They're like, eh, take the bar exam, asshole. Yep, like, yep. California, yeah. same. Yeah. Linz, what's that called when you can... Don't, can't you make a lot of money to travel as a nurse? Travel nursing? Uh, they literally pay They pay you room and board. What's that called when you travel as a nurse? Uh, travel the traveling nurse. Oh, okay. Is That's, it really? I thought it had some other name. Well, you work for a company. They pay for your room and board, so they put you up in a hotel for however long you want to go. It could be for a weekend, like in Vegas. Like, they can you they go take like weekend nurses. Vegas? They take weekend nurses because they usually have a huge You have a bad weekend in Vegas? I thought that's what strippers do. Then they just travel to Vegas <laughs> for a weekend and then fly. How do you I know nurses this? Nurses do it too. <laughs> hey, you know I'll this, tell you Kevin. what. I've heard. <laughs> How about this? I'm going to tell you the major drawback to being a nurse that okay. lawyers don't have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Body fluids. Yeah, that's true. Uh, co- <laughs> okay. Chinese COVID tests. I can't tell you the last time I've had a body fluid on me as a lawyer. Dude, I'd freaking barf. last resort i'd barf on his on his uh 
Don't say stamp anal tramp. swabs are super common. <laughs> but, uh, you have a stamp tramp? I can't give you this test. A, I'm a sorry. tramp stamp, father. That's what I said. <laughs> you said stamp tramp. Tramp stamp. A stamp, stamp tramp. tramp. I'm like picturing like a That's prostitute the name of the episode, covered John. in stamps. Like a stamp, stamp tramp. It's stamp <laughs> tramp. <laughs> I think you just named the episode. Caucus, caucus, caucus. I just <laughs> pulled up the anal swab thing again. I oh, mean, Lindsay, don't. are you looking forward to, to administering uh, this these? This is the Sims <laughs> position. If anybody knows Professor Herbert from the p and nursing school let them know i've been studying yeah, right. Sims position. <laughs> who says this isn't helping your career that's Lance? right Lance. i'm learning hey you know i think you should check john like just start getting okay. ready for your next career i am okay let's make sure he doesn't I have think a john is too john will make sure it'd be weird if you checked your dad so why have you checked john okay I don't, right. why am i checking anybody? <laughs> right. i feel okay I think john looks a little flush he's, he's fine all right. all right hey we, uh, we're, we're gonna talk some serious stuff here. okay we're gonna talk about a legislative update what's going on in the state house there's some funny stuff going on down there. I'm sure there's some great stuff going on down there, like a budget and all that. But we're not mm-hmm. going to focus on that mm-hmm. stuff. We're going to focus of on swabs. Speaking, yeah, <laughs> we're going to talk about. There's some. Ser- this is serious stuff, by the way. There's it some is. serious stuff, and there's some really ridiculous stuff too. We're going <clears> to <throat> cover it all, as we usually do here on Left of Center, while having fun doing it. By the way, if uh, Representative Van Adder's out there, hey, what's up, Rep? Thanks for uh, following us. We appreciate you. Appreciate the follow. That was sarcasm. <laughs> okay. Oh, I still want to being show. sassy McSasserson yes, again. He's yes, out. Mm-hmm. See what happens when Lindsay, when uh, Marissa's out of town. I know, right? He's, okay, I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to start with this one. You're starting. Okay, go. Uh, Senate Bill 130. Right. City name changes. This is uh, some of the important stuff coming out of our state capitol. Some lawmakers want to make it more challenging for cities to change their names. Senate Bill 130 would require those interested in changing the name of any city named in Indiana's Constitution or in Indiana Code, which is all of them basically, to obtain a certain number of signatures on a petition. If a city's governing body wants to move forward, the question can be taken to voters as a public question on the ballot. That's the old way, I think. Yeah, you're right. Now the new way is you can't do that. that uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't <laughs> you know where can't. I got this. You can't. There is no new way. They've removed yeah, it. Yeah, the, the new, the new way, is, way is no. You, no. you know where this is all originated. So they're going to pass this, by the way. Sure. Okay? And it's going to make it impossible for us to change uh, city names. So Damn. No McDermottville. McDermottville is out of the question. <laughs> right? There goes the big Left change. Left of Centerville. Is but you know where this is coming from? You know we were planning on that, so they just screwed us, McDermottville, right? yeah, like, this sucks, man. There like, goes the 2022 effort. Sorry, Hammond. We, uh, <laughs> but anyway, you know where this is all coming from, right? No. This is all coming from the whole like Redskins, Washington Redskins and Cleveland Indians. Oh, and I bet you're right. people in the Republican Party that are fearful that one day Indiana will have to change their name. Or maybe it's Indiana. like the Civil War uh, names of cities, like Civil War governor, you know, um, generals yeah, and things like that. Do we have that? In I there? don't know if we do. But like Indiana uh, is oh, what yeah, they're yeah. worried about. Is Indianapolis. That where, is that they're where the name that, came from? Is no. Indian? No. It was, I thought I, it was a Native American word for something else. No, I thought it was like Chicago to pay tribute to. I don't know. I have to look it up. Anyway, but. that's where this is coming from. Is they want to make it impossible to change the name of Indianapolis or Indiana? Huh? If they live, if it ever became like politically, you know. Yeah, I mean Indianapolis just means Indiana City, right? Polis is city. Uh, oh, po- yeah, Polis is so, city, right? I don't know. So anyway, and that's, we have a poll up. It's we have a poll up. up. Are that? you upset? Hammond can't be changed to McDermott. <laughs> that is a, I'm voting no. Lose, I'm losing votes. Yeah, this. Like, seriously. <laughs> People this are is all this in jest. Serious. This is not this serious is at all. Yeah. I love the name. Well, of you know, another one that I saw it, interesting. This whole um, cigarette tax hike. Yeah, there's a uh, Julie Alta, brand new Republican state rep, is carrying this tax hike. Well, back right. She was in out. Yeah, now back. But like, in. isn't it weird when you elect a Republican to office and she's carrying a huge tax increase? It's right It's interesting. Off the bat? <sighs> it's like, don't these people like? Aren't they supposed to be like the part? The party of lower taxes well here look at the name change thing i mean isn't it yeah. the par- isn't the party local of like control. stay out of your government right you know stay too much government and right. yet here they are saying like locals can't do this locals can't do this counties can't do this cities can't do this towns can't do this let's tax cigarettes by the way i thought one of the funny things because and and i i think you know it's a good idea to try to keep get people to stop smoking right of course i mean so if and there's some studies i guess she cited that says oh well you know if you raise taxes for example I saw Cook County is three dollar. No, Chicago and Cook County together are four dollars and thirteen cents in taxes. Mm-hmm. By the way, just Cook County and Chicago. So this is just gonna. Don't worry, you can still get your. This is gonna be two bucks. Cigarette right? stores will still be in, in business in Indiana. So it's we're still half dollar. of what they are. But like this is what was interesting: one hundred seventy-two million dollars in increased revenue this tax will raise in twenty twenty-two, and it's supposed to be to help curb smoking. Yet right. they they 
estimate that in 2023 they're going to raise more money. <laughs> 180. So more people are buying <laughs> right. cigarettes. Hmm. So parent, I'm not sure how that works, but Indiana has 20 per, 21 percent of adult smokers, which is the fourth highest in the United States. I believe that Indiana is the eleventh wow. highest in the United States of smoking among teens. Um, wow. That's by the crazy. way, they're also passing punitive taxes on vaping products as well. A uh, 40 percent tax increase on vaping products is part of this bill. Forty so, percent. Isn't that weird? That remember how like vaping like hit a real big snag. And yeah. then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, my God, it's going away. Because yeah. there, I think it was because it wasn't regulated. It was like bad stuff that was going in. Yeah, it wasn't you know, the, honestly, like the regulation of marijuana in certain states helps with that. Because, sure. Yeah. Because it's regulated right, product. Exactly. Because people a lot of times were buying vapes, and they were made in somebody's basement. And yeah. Who knows what's in it. Or you're you know? buying it at the gas station when they were selling right. all that fake weed right. and all this other right. stuff. And right. So, like, actually, regulation of marijuana helped with vaping. And, I believe that. And it's funny. Remember, like, for, I don't remember what year it was, 2017 is. Sure. Where it was all about vaping. Everything you saw in the yeah. news was vaping, kids dying of vaping, yeah. and all of a sudden it's gone. Like because I think like, it's because they're getting, it's yeah. getting, it's the, the product's getting better and it's regulated. Anymore. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It reminded me of the it's year of the shark. Around. There was one year, uh, there was like all these shark attacks and everybody's focusing I remember. on it. And then I think we had a terrorist attack. It might have been September 11th, actually. And then all of a sudden nobody talked about shark attacks anymore. Interesting. And you think the sharks just the went away. The media gets bored with right. things. Well, the sharks also, are still attacking us. It's just we don't focus are. on it anymore, you know? On a federal level, they banned disposable e-cigarettes, so they're much harder to get a hold of in the United States. You don't hear about e-cigarettes much anymore. Well, it's the same thing as vapes. They're, but vapes, well, it seems more popular. Vapes are packs, but you could also get them in a small disposable form. Mm-hmm. And Sounds like they an were expert. all... Hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's okay, my I'm job to know these things. <laughs> Nursing? Hmm. Okay. Yes. Hmm. All right, how about this okay. one? I got one. Uh, we talked about this, and, you know, obviously we had the mayor of Indianapolis, Joe Hogshead, on as a guest on Left of Center, and he's a fan, and we're fans, and uh, he is a strong Democrat in the state of Indiana. Some people talk about him running for U.S. Senate. Some people talk about him running for governor. Uh, maybe he wants to stay mayor the rest of his career. But nonetheless, whenever you're a threat and a Democrat, the General Assembly usually does something to put you in your place. So in this case, Senate Bill 168, which is absolutely ludicrous, in my opinion. Uh, check this out. It would create a state oversight board for IMPD. Basically, What's IMPD? Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. Okay, It's scheduled to be heard by Corrections and Criminal Law Committee on February 16th in the Senate. The board would adopt, amend, and enforce municipal ordinances, resolutions, and rules pertaining to, uh, to the administration of the police department in Indianapolis, as well as serve as the agency's merit board and appoint the police chief. So this board... Wait a minute. The city police department? Yeah. Not the, not the sheriff department, not the county, no. not the state police? The county police. is the city. It's sure. the same thing. State police? This is about the city no, police department? No, this is city police department. Wow. The governor would appoint four members to this board, and the Indianapolis mayor would serve as the fifth. Oh, that's nice. You get 20%. So this, this bill is authored in the Senate by Sandlin, Representative Jack Sandlin, Republican from, from Indianapolis, Indianapolis, and it has a second author and 10 co-authors. It's going to pass the Senate. That's... So if this gets over to the House, basically what they're saying is they're taking over the Indianapolis Police Department from the Indianapolis mayor. And they're going to have, he gets the honor of serving as one of five (laughs) on the board. And then the other four. Who hires the chief? The the board. So the chief that was hired by the mayor will get fired. And when they say things like, uh, this is, you know, obviously I've been mayor a long time. Resolution to serve as the agency's merit board. You know what that means? Discipline. Promotion. Promotion. Discipline. Handled That's by the governor. Crazy. So the governor so the state of Indiana is, control. is getting ready to take over the Indianapolis Police Department. Well, what's to stop them from saying we're taking over the Hammond Police they Department? Could. Gary like Police Department. Same. So, like, they could. By the way, look, the state has taken over the Gary schools. Now the state's getting ready to take over the Indianapolis Police Department. Why would they There's want nothing that, stopping though? them. I mean, if any, you know. But I mean, why would a Republican that, that bitches all the time about Washington, D.C. and influencing too much Indiana. Government. Yeah, too much they're government They're all oversight. up in our business here in the localities. Well, they're all in everybody's business where there's a Democratic stronghold, That's it right. sounds like. Which is crazy. That's I mean, gonna this pass. is going to turn someday. This I don't know gonna if it's going to be in my lifetime. But. This is going to pass the Indiana Senate. Mm-hmm. Now, whether or not it gets beat in the House is a whole different question. I'm not sure if it's going to or not. But do you really think that this is about, this is all about power. power. And they, yeah. they have Joe Hogsett. And we're going to put that Democratic mayor in his place. And believe me, I know where this is coming from because they do that shit well, to I can me tell all you the this. time. I can tell you this. If I'm Mayor Joe and this does pass, every time there's a murder, yep. every, time there's a, every time there's a, a, a kidnapping, every mm-hmm. time there's a bank robbery, every time there's a this or that, car guess what? Yeah, Governor's carjacking. Fault. Yeah. Well, Governor. ask Mayor Holcomb. Don't ask me. Yeah. I'm one of five Governor votes. I'm sorry. Yes. Well, my, he's acting like Mayor Holcomb. It's so, like, I've never heard of anywhere 
in the country where the governor runs a city police department. I, you know, that'd be an interesting research project. I don't know if that's ever happened this either. This is so ludicrous. And it's all punitive. It's all about... Why, all though? What, have they, what, have, what, has because, Mayor jo, what has Mayor Joe done to hurt the Republicans? It's just because he's popular? It's because he, of he, the Democrats' support of Black Lives Matter. I think wow. that might play a part in it. I'm sure. Well, sure because it of, well, they are doing some stuff about like limiting the power of mayors as far as like you can't ban chokeholds in the police department, but like we've done in Hammond. Sure. So like if the state law passes, us banning chokeholds in the Hammond Police Department would be illegal in Indiana. So like, which is ludicrous. They're like we don't want what? Yeah, there's a bill. I didn't see that. Absolutely, there's, it's so you can't ban chokeholds. So keep in mind one thing I've learned in 17 years of being mayor, and I'm, I don't have to preach to Kevin because he's in it every year with me. Is just because bills are floated doesn't mean they have a chance in passing. Okay, and so like I have a tendency not to get fired up about bills because they're you know at this stage of the game they have a long way to go. But the IMPD bill is getting ready to pass the Senate. It's got 10 co-sponsors. I'd love to hear what Mayor Joe has to say about this. I'd love to hear what Mayor Joe has to Mayor say about Joe, this. Mayor Joe, if you're out there listening. I'd, lo I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. Tell us Two if you want to come on and talk. Area code 219-595-0792. <laughs> no, actually, I think that number doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Why don't we take that off then? <laughs> God damn, I'm just doing my job. We want here, Mayor you know? Joe to come back on Skype. Send dad a text. Yeah, yeah, you sure. have his number. Right. I see your mom's how about watching. How about another one? Microchipping employees, other important shit coming out of the state house. Sick. When I say important shit, I mean this is ridiculous. This is what they're busy with. This is what they're busy with, right? A bill addressing the prohibition of microchipping employees on Thursday advanced from the House Committee on Employment, Labor, and Pensions. House Bill 1156 expands the definition of employers prohibited from requiring the implantation of microchips in employees <laughs> To include the state or any individual, partnership, association, limited liability company, corporation, business trust, governmental entity, or political subdivision that has one or more employees. Well, there you which go. Which completely sucks. I can't microchip city employees, my employees. I was going to say, everybody at City Hall, breathe easy. You're not going to be microchipped, John. 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 <laughs> Whew. Take that plan off the table. I've been lobbying for that bill for a long I thought time. The, I, I thought the IT department was behind the microchipping at City Hall, John. We elect these people, guys. I'm just sitting here listening to you guys. What is going on, man? This is government. You've got a well, microchip in your phone. And this is what I would say. Uh, you know, a lot of times, and, and I'm not saying this just because state government, because you see it sometimes in city government, sometimes too, or, you know, wherever. When you have a supermajority, you you start getting into, I think, weird areas. <laughs> I mean, because you can stuff. do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. And, and there's nobody saying, there's no but check like, and balance. Isn't there like a, like, there should be like a grand poobah of the Republican Party <laughs> that says... Julie Altoff, are you freaking crazy? Yeah, you're me. floating a forty percent tax increase, <laughs> and you're you, a Republican. Me, like, where's the Grand Poobah? I, I want a Grand Poobah. Poobah. The like, I am Ronald Reagan's dead, you know, ghost, and like, you know, like you, what you are doing is not Republican. Right? Reagan I mean, would be ashamed as, as a Dem Dude, as a Democrat. Reagan I'm fine with the cigarette with this tax. Republican Party. There should be a gas tax that goes to the locals. There should be a fireworks tax they should that goes allow with... the locals to, to run their businesses, like we've done in Hammond. We run yeah, our... and if you do it poorly, you're not you, going to get reelected. Your voters will replace you. That's the idea. That's right. So yeah, ridiculous. Crazy. Hey, Dad, yeah. Yeah. whenever I have kids, I'm going to have make sure that they call you Poobah. Nice. Oh, nice. I like that. Grand like Poobah. That. Whenever <laughs> I have kids. My favorite part so far today whenever was Stamp happens. Tramp. That's a, the Stamp Tramp? <laughs> when you said Stamp Tramp. You want kids, then. At some That's point. A big, just not for a while. Red wants us to mention the wetlands legislation. I don't know if, enough about it personally to talk about it. I know. I, I read a story in the paper today. Like it was draining like, the wetlands. They're trying to drain the wetlands. Yeah, I think, no, they want to remove control property. from IDEM. Like, yeah, I didn't fall. Think about this. A Republican legislature said, stop. We're right. not going to legislate anymore about draining the wetlands. And I Dem fought it. Right. The Republican well, controlled administrative agency. There's a war back. going on in the Republican Party. Oh. They, don't, they don't love their governor. Uh, governor Look at what uh, Representative uh, Morris did on the floor about that? the COVID regulations. He went yeah. after him. Well, that, this could I cover that real quick? Maybe he wants to run for governor. Executive powers. More than a dozen bills have been filed this legislative session intended to rein in Republican Governor Eric Holcomb's powers during health emergencies. House Bill 1519, which has been heard in committee but not yet voted on, would prohibit Indiana governors from dictating a business's hours of operation or its capacity <laughs> level, ban the executive branch from reaching, requiring churchgoers to socially distance from each other or wear masks, Jeez. forbid the government's closure of private schools, and prohibit Governor Holcomb from limiting the operations of hospitals. Likewise, Bill... Uh, House Bill 1123, which requires General Assembly approval of emergency orders lasting more than 30 days, has also been heard in committee. That's crazy. They're at war with their own governor. I mean, the go because I, he's know, actually tr tried to like rein in the pandemic. I think the governor's done a pretty good job. I do too. With the pandemic, governor and Holcomb, I, the fact that he's getting we're talking positive here, man, I, I I feel bad for him. I think he's it's a crazy. reasonable person. 
He's and you cannot be reasonable and be a good Republican anymore. Or at least to some of the Republicans. I mean, I think there's a faction of them that think, oh no, you can't do anything. Like what they wanted Governor Holcomb to do was like be a Trump and do nothing. Yeah. And say, No, we don't need masks in Indiana. It's like what? welcome to Indiana. <laughs> what yeah. Tom just read is hilarious. Essentially, Tom, what you just read was they want to <laughs> legislate to prevent Control power. the governor from doing <laughs> yeah. the governor they from want being to executive control rather than being controlled. That's it's a so fight. by using con- it's legislation, like the power. they want to prevent control. They yes. want to prevent executive. <laughs> so they want to say, use force to keep you from using force. Indiana has already amazing. got the, one of the weakest governors. I'm not think about, about that, right? I'm not talking about Governor Holcomb here. I'm talking about the office Just of governor in Indiana can be only. overridden by a majority of the legislature. Think about that. There's huh. no two thirds, no right. two thirds uh, veto. So let's wow. think about Override. this realistically. So if you pass a law, it has to get through the, a majority of the legislature, right? So the governor of Indiana vetoes a law that's already had a majority, <laughs> and that's then they're right. like, "Okay, f you, we're just going to vote again, you, right?" That's it's one of the weakest in the United States of America. Wow. That office already, and then they're passing bills that make it basically powerless. You can't even regulate things during a pandemic. Oh, so I gotta like, call think the about General this. Assembly back in so the session. So they pass that. The governor vetoes it. They just revote. Right. Right. I mean, it's crazy. So it's like the queen. There's no check and like... balance. The legislature is God, basically. Representative Moore, uh, Van Adder, he's out there like, you know, gleaming. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> and the governor is a figurehead. Like, just like Kokomo, burning. are you listening? Kokomo. Right. Kokomo, oust your representative. <laughs> oh. These are the people you're voting for. Yeah. Ridiculous. Well, I mean, and here's another thing. I mean, don't forget what's coming down the road this year is redistricting so that like, you know, I mean, they can redistrict again to make it. What do we, what do we have in the Senate now? Ten. What do we have in the government? In the, in the, in the Indiana has what, zero. Uh, what do we ha- Hammond has zero right now? Well, what do we, what do we have, have the, for two years? What do we have in the state house? <laughs> Next 20, Friday, I'm going to do a hard hitting show. Kevin. Oh, you are. OK. OK. Well, we're finishing up. So Sassy on Friday, McSasterson's on fire. Hold on, hold on, I'm serious. On Friday, I'm going to freaking piss some people off. I promise you. Okay, well, I'm getting my 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 stuff together, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring something up that's gonna piss people off. They're gonna be pissed when they hear about this is situation. Something in the news? No, I wish it was. I wish the media would do their job, but they're not. So I'm gonna do it for them on left of center. Okay, right. and th- I've th- there's numerous people in the media that know about this situation that I'm gonna come out with on Friday, and it's gonna piss you off. There's gonna be people pissed off at me for bringing it up, and there's gonna be a lot of people that are pissed off over hypocrisy about different standards that apply to different people and i'm going to bring it up on friday and i'm going to blow you wow. away oh, I episode so 10 nervous. episode 10 john are we I'm, going to have episode 10 now are you walking out or are you going to do this? i promise you guys i'm going to blow you away on I've friday when you hear this story when heard. you hear this story you're going to be pissed i'm going to piss off 80 percent of the people that listen to the show oh, that's no. not a, as an elected official that that's not a good i don't know not all of them are going to be pissed at me. They're going to be pissed at the situation. Gotcha. Right. Maybe 35% will be pissed at me. We're all right. For, make even a br- tiny for even bringing it up. A left of center army. I'm going to bring go. it up and people are going to be like, you're an asshole for bringing it up. Listen on Friday. And there's going to be a lot of people that are like, this person's an asshole for being... If we, if we don't have Mayor Joe or some other good guest, get ready for Mayor Tom to go off. I'm going to piss off a lot of people on Friday. I promise Jim you. Wolf says to fire up the piss off I like right, that. Baby. I'm telling you, well, Friday's show is going to be well worth it. I'm doing homework. Like look the show out. before. We're doing a research in MLA format. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Mayor. Well, I know we've got something happening today that we've got to get to. Yes, so uh, we're going to make it. A, we're going to wrap it up. Why don't you wrap up the Season show? Season two, episode nine was uh, quite the episode i think we'll all agree but i tell you what you don't want to miss season two episode 10 so for now you know why we're belgium's number one podcast with my great co-host kevin smith our great other co-host Lindsay mcdermott or whatever <laughs> or promoted. whatever the awesome producer john I? besmar and your your favorite locomotive tom mcdermott mayor hammond <laughs> thank you guys for watching Lockpod and listening to Lockpod. don't forget to rate subscribe all that stuff please watch us on youtube subscribe there as well awesome guys take care